Okay, so in this next video, we're going to address uh, the triangle inequality in um, in uh, unitary and Euclidean spaces. The triangle inequality uh, in Rn and Cn. Okay, uh, so we want to turn. Uh, if recall from previous videos that we uh, we tried to produce metrics on Rn and Cn, and the way that we did it is uh, if uh, just to recall, I will uh, state what these spaces are. Rn is equal to the set of uh, x1, x2, all the way up to xn, so n, uh, n tuples of um, real numbers. So xi is all, all real numbers, and uh, cn is exactly the same, but the uh, elements are complex numbers. So we have x1, x2, um, all the way up to xn. So you could think of these as uh, finite versions of the LP spaces. Remember, the LP spaces were these um, ones where you went off to infinity, um, and um, xi are all elements of the complex numbers here. So these are the sets on which we wanted to define the metric. And the way that we did it is that we defined the distance uh, function between any two, ve uh, any two um, vectors, we'll call these, or you could think of them as finite sequences. We'll define the distance between them to be equal to uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of x, um, sorry, um, yes, xi minus yi, uh, all of that squared, and then we square rooted it. And we uh, noted that in R2 and R3, uh, this was the usual Euclidean metric that we are, we know and love, and the which obeys Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, uh, so uh, this, with the modular sign, uh, this works for both uh, whether whether we're dealing with a uh, complex um, a complex vector space or whether we're dealing with the real vector space, i.e. whether we're dealing with the Euclidean space or the unitary space, um, because uh, in the if we're if these are just real numbers, uh, then the abs the modulus will just mean the absolute value, uh, whereas if they're complex numbers, they'll mean the usual complex modulus. Okay, uh, so just uh, to make things clear, the vector x is going to be x1, x2, all the way up to xn, and the vector i, uh, the vector y rather, will be equal to y1, uh, y2, all the way up to uh, yn. So we've already checked that this function will obey axioms 1 to 3 of a uh, metric space. So we just now want to make sure that it's going to obey axiom 4 of a metric space, i.e. the triangle inequality. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use Minkowski's inequality. Uh, so in the process of deriving Minkowski's inequality, we, inadver uh, we saw that prior to getting Minkowski's inequality, we had the finite version of Minkowski's inequality. We had that the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of ai plus bi uh, to the power of p to the power of 1 over p was less than or equal to the summation i is equal to uh, 1 to n of the modulus of ai uh, to the power of p to the power of 1 over p uh, plus uh, the modulus, uh, the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of bi uh, to the power of p uh, to the power of 1 over p. And just like in the case of the finite holders inequality, what you can think of is uh, uh, use the uh, use the infinite Minkowski inequality, uh, but just let uh, the vector a be equal to a1, a2, all the way up to however many terms you have, a n. And then after that, just assume all the other terms are 0 after it. And the same for the uh, b vector. b is equal to uh, b1 all the way up to uh, b n and then zero afterwards. And uh, the Minkowski's inequality, Minkowski inequality just reduces down to this. But as I say, we you, we derived this prior. Uh, we derived this before uh, deriving the uh, min the full Minkowski inequality. Uh, we were assuming that AI and BI were infinite vectors, but that doesn't matter. We're only using a finite number of components of them in this statement. So if it's true for infinite vectors with a bunch of irrelevant components after the nth component, then it's certainly going to be true for uh, true for finite vectors, and I keep uh, interchanging between saying sequences and vectors. Don't worry about that. Uh, just uh, just uh, view, uh, when I say vectors, I mean sequences, and we will do vector spaces, and we'll see how uh, even these infinite sequences are, in fact, uh, can be thought of as vectors. 
Okay, uh, so because this inequality is true for our two sequences x and y, uh, then we can apply it over here. Uh, we'll let p let uh, p equal to. So that's certainly fine, and uh, we get that the Minkowski's inequality reduces down to the statement that i is equal to 1 uh, to n, whatever n is, so n is just the dimension, uh, well, n is going to be our dimension of our, uh, of our Euclidean or unitary space, uh, of the modulus of a i plus b i squared, uh, all of that square rooted, or to the power of a half, is less than or equal to the summation j is equal, i, sorry, i is equal to 1 to n, of the modulus of ai squared, uh, square rooted, plus the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of bi squared, all of that square rooted. Okay, uh, so turn over the page. Oh dear, we've got something on the back there. Uh, so get another piece of paper. And basically, now what we want to do is use that inequality to prove the triangle inequality. So the distance between x and y is equal to the uh, square root of the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of xi minus yi uh, squared. Now let uh, z be another point in rn slash cn, uh, i.e. let's let it equal z is equal to the z1, z2, all the way up to zn. And uh, then uh, the distance between x and y could be rewritten as the square root of our same trick again, uh, subtract it and then add it back on to make the statement true, xi minus zi uh, plus zi minus yi uh, squared. And it might help to rewrite this as uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of xi minus zi plus zi minus yi squared, all of that to the power of a half. Okay, and then we just apply this inequality, basically. We say, uh, let's let uh, this bit here, so coloured pens come out again. Let's let uh, this bit here uh, be equal to our A over here. Oh dear, the paper, uh, our A. And let's let the other bit, uh, where's the other pink highlighter? Uh, let's let this bit here, the B I, uh, be this bit here, uh, the Z I minus Y I. Okay. So then we get that this is less than or equal to uh, the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of ai, which is the modulus of xi minus zi, squared to the power of a half, plus the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of zi minus yi, squared to the power of a half. Okay, uh, so this is just by definition the distance between x and z, and this is the distance between z and y, so there we go, we have proven the triangle inequality in our unitary or Euclidean space. So there, we now we have completed our proof uh, that uh, the, um, the um, set uh, Rn, or Cn, with this metric on it, uh, where we define the distance between x and y to be given by this, uh, is in fact equal to a metric space.